Fidi González. Grüße. Fidi González, pass dich Maus in all Mexico. Fidi González, friend of my sister. Fidi González, friend of everybody's sister. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez is the pint-sized hero of the Looney Tunes roster. Not only the fastest mouse in all Mexico, but an icon and legend of Latin America. Introduced in the mid-1950s as the final star character, Speedy has gone on to lead a storied history, marred with political controversy, but decorated by willful triumph. While only starring in 45 classic shorts, Speedy has left a mark like few other Looney stars. In 2021, Speedy celebrates 68 years, and to help him, I will trace his evolution from 1953 to now. To do so, we will look at his entire history, touching on design and personality changes over a near seven decades of shorts, series, and feature films. In this edition of Cartoon Evolution. <laughs> In 1944, Leon Schlesinger sold his animation studio to Warner Brothers after more than a decade of producing Looney Tunes cartoons for them. While the studio had birthed such cultural icons as Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck and Porky Pig, they were not enough to keep it afloat, and under the guidance of new studio head Edward Seltzer, new characters were rapidly introduced to ensure retention of audience interest, and soon enough their lexicon of stars outnumbered that of their lead competitor, Walt Disney. In between starring features, animators continually developed one-shot cartoons with minor characters that would recur once or twice or be one and done. In some cases, these cartoons introduced a character so popular they'd eventually join the ever-expanding star roster. Robert McKimson's 1953 short, Cat Tales for Two, was intended as a vehicle for two semi-recurring characters, a dog named Benny and a cat named George, fashioned after Lenny and George, the lead characters of John Steinbeck's novel Of Mice and Men. In this short, the two are on the hunt for Mexican food, as they plunder a Mexican ship for mice. Here they come up against a character named Speedy Gonzalez, who proclaims himself to be the fastest mouse in all Mexico. Speedy was intended to be one of those one and done characters, and as such it's clear that very little thought went into his depiction. He was, without a doubt, born from ethnic prejudices of the time, as a stereotypical Mexican caricature, with dark fur, big buck teeth, one of them gold, large pointed eyes and scruffy hair. Despite his brash physical depiction, Speedy's personality and narrative function seemingly flew against other stereotypes, which often painted Mexicans and other Latin Americans as lazy, slow and unintelligent. Speedy Gonzalez, however, was energetic, fast and smart, likely aiming to draw laughs by subverting stereotypes with a depiction rarely seen on the screen. The name Speedy Gonzalez itself is said to also stem from a joke, a dirty and culturally insensitive one at that, which McKimson had heard and used on the character. However, another less common story suggests that it was inspired by assistant animator Frank Gonzalez, whose quick drawing skills had earned him the name Speedy Gonzalez at the studio. True to his intent, McKimson didn't return to the character immediately, though this perhaps wasn't helped by the fact that, soon before the film's release, Warners closed the animation division down. At the height of the 3D craze, believing, as many others did, that the format was the future of cinema, studio head honcho Jack Warner was frightened that the exorbitant and budgets needed to create such films would be unsustainable for animation. Along with McKimson, most other animators were laid off, albeit only briefly, as the studio reopened only five months later when 3D proved to be a passing fad. Three artists who remained at the studio during this time, putting final touches on leftover productions, were director Frizz Freeling, writer Warren Foster, and layout artist Hawley Pratt. Freeling's team continued to hatch ideas, and clearly taken by McKimson's Mexican rodent, began to concoct a starring feature for him. Finding the previous physical depiction to be problematic, Freeling called for a redesign to rid him of all prejudicial features. Speedy evolved into a character who 
appeared not only less offensive, but friendlier and cleaner. He was given lighter fur, a large cheeky green, a spiky tuft of hair, and traditional smart attire, including white shirt and pants, a red neckerchief, and a gigantic yellow sombrero. Having successfully paired the pre-existing Sylvester and Tweety in the late 1940s, Freeling decided to pit his dim-witted cat against Speedy, and worked up a similar rivalry formula for the pair. In 1955's Speedy Gonzalez, Sylvester is seen as an antagonistic character, guarding a cheese factory from a mischief of Mexican mice on the other side of the Mexico-US border. Of course, Sylvester is too slow and stupid to keep out Speedy, and no matter what plans he hatches, Speedy outsmarts him, causing them to backfire, much like in the Tweety shorts. This short is one of the era's highlights, and one of Freeling's most memorable ever. It won that year's Academy Award for Best Short Subject Cartoons spawned a number of famous catchphrases and made Speedy a Looney Tunes star, the last of the Golden Age. Speedy's next few appearances, while taking on a rivalry formula, were somewhat unique. 1957's Tabasco Road returned McKimson to the character, and saw Speedy up against a large alley cat, while that same year's Gonzales Tamales, again helmed by Freeling, saw his fellow village mice enlisting Sylvester to run him out of town for his womanising ways. 1958's Tortilla Flaps, another McKimson effort, saw Speedy and his pals against Senor Volturo, and 1959's Mexicali Schmoes, another Freeling, saw him chased by two Mexican cats, Jose and Manuel, and also introduced his somewhat problematic cousin, Slowpoke Rodriguez, a lazy character built in the same mould as Speedy's prototype. While these shorts were well received, two of them even garnering Academy Award nominations, the Speedy series soon grew formulaic. As Freeling and McKimson continued to rotate directorial duties, almost every following short between 1960 and 1965 pitted Speedy against the El Gringo Pusegato Sylvester in escapades that were practically a copy-paste of their debut film. Speedy outsmarts and outruns Sylvester in the pursuit of food. As Gene and repetitive as these were, one more was graced with an Academy Award nomination. The sole film in this period not to feature Sylvester, 1964's Pancho's Hideaway, instead saw Speedy foiling the exploits of Bandito Pancho Vanilla, a Mexican Yosemite Sam. In fact, this short marked the beginning of a new era for the Looney Tunes, as Warner's handed production duties to DePatty Freeling Enterprises. This independent unit, based on the Warner lot, was formed by Freeling and Warner executive David H. DePatty after Warner's closed their animation department due to dwindling interest in theatrical animation and the rising popularity of television cartoons. Thus began a five year period of outsourced cartoons. Along with this came slashed budgets, with shorts made for half the previous cost. Due to this, the limited animation style popular in the era was utilised. This made use of fewer frames and other animation shortcuts, resulting in jerky movement and overall low quality. Animation historians Leonard Moulton and Jerry Beck have respectively called the cartoons of this era abysmal and lazy, flat, a disappointment and a bore. While Speedy remained in the same design, he now took on a minimalised appearance. More than 60 cartoons were produced during this time, most of which relied on formula characters such as Wile E. Coyote and The Roadrunner. As Sylvester was now teamed back with Tweety, Speedy's new on-screen foe was Daffy the Loco Duck. The two appeared in a total of 26 formulaic cartoons, their final being 1968's See Ya Later Gladiator, commonly considered the single worst Looney Tune of all time. Interestingly, Bugs Bunny never appeared in any of the outsourced shorts. Beck suggests that Warners believe they had enough Bugs cartoons, with 160 of them, and needed more starring side characters. 
This way they could be issued alongside Bugs re-releases in theatres and later be used to bulk up the offering of syndicated cartoons on Saturday morning TV, as their current series, all of which often featured Speedy cartoons, were incredibly popular. Beck further suggests that the pairing of Speedy and Daffy was a cost-cutting move that gave them the option of putting the cartoons into either a Daffy or Speedy show. And this is exactly what happened when Warners launched the Sylvester and Tweety Daffy and Speedy show in 1982, and then the Daffy Speedy show in 1987. Classic Speedy shorts were also syndicated in TV compilation specials and theatrical package features between the 1970s and 1980s. Although he joined the ranks of the Looney Tunes quite late, thanks mostly to the DePatty Freeling Outboard, Speedy appeared in a hefty 45 classic shorts, tying him with Wiley e. Coyote and the Roadrunner as seventh most used Looney Tune in the Golden Age. Despite appearing regularly in package programs, after the cartoons came to an end in 1968, it was more than a decade before Speedy appeared in newly animated productions. The first of which was 1979's Bugs Bunny's Looney Christmas Tales, a TV special consisting of three brand new shorts. In the third, The Fright Before Christmas, a spoof of the classic Christmas poem The Night Before Christmas, Speedy appears, albeit briefly, as a stirring mouse. The following year, he also appeared in TV special Daffy Duck's Easter Excitement short, The Chocolate Chase, which became the final short to pair Speedy and Daffy. The two, however, appeared together in 1983 theatrical movie Daffy Duck's Fantastic Island. While this film packaged a collection of classic cartoons, Speedy and Daffy appeared as the program's hosts in newly animated bridging sequences, which parodied the popular TV show Fantasy Island. To help aid the reference, Speedy's size was even considerably altered, now disturbingly appearing the size of a small person. Speedy then reappeared briefly in Disney's 1988 live action animation hybrid film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, for which they licensed numerous Warner's characters for cameos. Speedy appears during the finale in an all-star tune lineup. Throughout the 1990s, Speedy was used purely through similar cameos. He appeared in an episode of Tiny Toon Adventures along Alongside Foghorn Leghorn as commentator of the Acme Acres Summer Olympics. As with all other tunes, Speedy had a protege in the series, a young Mexican mouse, Lightning Rodriguez, a slightly modernised youthful version of him. He also appeared in an episode of the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries called Al Dia de los Pusigatos, where he taunts Sylvester in a dream sequence, and in the series spin-off film Tweety's High Flying Adventure, during a sequence where Tweety travels to Mexico. Mexico. His most notable appearance in the 1990s was 96's live action hybrid feature film Space Jam, in which he appears as a minor member of the Toon Squad. While his screen time is limited, he was given a realistic appearance with 3D shading effects to make him stand out from live action backdrops. In the early 2000s, he also appeared in an episode of Mucha Lucha, in the series stylized animation style with thick black outlines. In 1999, Cartoon Network gained exclusive rights to air Looney Tunes cartoons in the USA and quietly dropped Speedy Gonzalez shorts from their lineup. When fans began to question this in 2002, a network spokeswoman told Fox News, It hasn't been on the air for years because of its ethnic stereotypes. We have such a huge library. We intend to go with popular shows that aren't going to upset people. We're not about pushing the boundary. Of course, Speedy's fans came out to defend their favourite little mouse in swarms. Thousands took to the Hispanic online message boards to air their grievances and led an email campaign against Cartoon Network. A vast majority of these pundits were Latin Americans who grew up considering the character an idol, hero and revolucionario. Instead of considering the cartoons offensive, the vast majority embraced the way their culture had been depicted in a way that was uncommon for the time, even seeing the humour in the caricaturized depiction of their peoples. In fact, the League of United Latin American Citizens even named him a cultural icon. 
Cartoon Network buckled under pressure and once again began playing speedy cartoons later that year. In 2003's Looney Tunes Back in Action, another live action animated hybrid film, Speedy is quickly seen lamenting the pains of having to be politically correct in the modern age alongside Porky Pig, a clear reference to this controversy. Between 2001 and 2005, Speedy appeared in a number of short webtoons produced in limited digital animation. While many of these appearances were, again, brief cameos, he headlined one titled Noye de Topa, or Mouse Troubles, in which he was pitted against Sylvester for the first time in 40 years. Strangely produced in Italian, this was the only webtoon not released in the English language. Likewise, throughout the mid-2000s, he appeared in a number of popular Spanish language television commercials for Volkswagen. In 2006 he appeared in Bar Humduck A Looney Tunes Christmas as one of Daffy's Lucky Duck Superstore staff members. He's seen as a speedy assembly line worker putting together toys for Christmas. This film marked his first appearance in a modern crisp digital animation. As of the 2010s, Speedy's usage in new Looney Tunes media has become more frequent and substantial. He was a regular in The Looney Tunes Show, which ran between 2011 and 2014, where he was seen as a housemate of a modernised suburbanite Bugs and Daffy, living rent-free in a hole in their wall. Throughout the series, he's also seen working in his own pizza parlour, Pizza Riba. Even though fans were happy with Speedy's more extensive appearances, many made note of the character's politically correct to depiction, which downplayed many of his more pronounced Mexican traits. While all characters on the series were given fresh redesigns by artist Jessica Boratsky, blending the zany characteristics of Bob Clampett's classic characters with the angular design of Chuck Jones's, Speedy was one of few characters whose design wasn't heavily altered, despite a more stylized look. He appeared again in this design in the series spin-off movie Rabbit's Run released in 2015, and around the same time, he was depicted in an elderly form in Mexican-Italian comedian Al Madrigal's stand-up special Half Like Me. In a 2018 episode of New Looney Tunes, originally called Wabbit, Speedy made his first and only series appearance. The designs, character personalities and overall tone took influence from the zany screwball films of Clampett and Tex Avery, bringing Speedy back to his more manic and over-the-top personality. His appearance is once again more stylized. In this episode, he goes on an adventure with Sylvester and Tweety, his first teaming with both, and appears in an all-black attire, in reference to popular Mexican bandito Zorro. As of 2021, Speedy has only appeared in one of the current Looney Tunes cartoons, Happy Birthday Bugs Bunny, a YouTube short designed to celebrate Bugs's 80th anniversary. Here he appears in a classic era design in a blink and you'll miss him cameo, as fast as Speedy himself. Though he's come under fire again recently by some who've called him out for being politically incorrect, Speedy is set to appear in 2021 Space Jam sequel, A New Legacy, where he'll be given a more significant role on the Toon Squad even prominently gracing one of the film's character posters. Throughout the film, Speedy will be seen in both a traditionally animated style and a 3D computer animated style. Here, he'll be voiced by famed Mexican-American comedian Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Where Speedy will go next is not completely certain. However, since 2010, there's been word of a potential live-action animated Speedy film in the works. While many prospective loony movies have failed to find realisation in recent times, the late 2020 announcement that the long gestating Coyote vs Acme is finally headed for production gives us hope that our favourite little mouse will live to race another day. And at that, I'm throwing it over to you. I want to know what is your favourite Speedy Gonzalez short and appearance. Fire away down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.